and welcome back to my channel. If you want to see this full face, go ahead and check out my previous video using all Undone Beauty products. Now, let's go ahead and wash this makeup off and put on a brand new face. Hey everybody, welcome back for a, another video. I am, as always, excited to be sitting down with you guys to record. For today's video, we are doing another brand new face video. I love doing brand new face videos, so let's just dive into it. <laughs> Not much more to talk about here, um, but the brand that we are going to be playing with today is Kiko Milano. Yes, so I've got all the products here. I have them still in their boxes, which usually I like to break the stuff down and just have it ready to go, but I made all these little like display things when I went and purchased a bunch of makeup for brand new face videos. And I was just like, ah, might as well just show it off this way to you guys. But we do have a full, full face of Kiko Milano here to test and play with and create a brand new face with. I know nothing about this brand. So I'm very excited to see what they're all about, play with some makeup, give you guys my first impressions and just my first initial thoughts on the brand. So yeah, let's dive into it. Let's pull up their website, see what the brand is all about. So on their website, their About Us is pretty simple, which is nice. It says here, uh, Kiko Milano was established and founded in 1997 by, and I'm, probably going to mispronounce his name, I do apologize, Percasi. It is an Italian professional cosmetics brand that features a range of cutting edge makeup, face and body treatments. Safe and effective products of the highest quality created to satisfy the beauty requirements of women of any age. So high quality, woman of any age, should work with any skin types, you know, mature skin, anything like that, I imagine. And then it's got a section here that says, find your own beautiful. This is how Kiko sums up its, sums ups, why can't I? This is how Kiko sums up its vision and beauty. I don't know why that was so hard to say. Uh, through extraordinary, extraordinarily wide and diversified range of products, Kiko allows everyone to express their own personality in unparalleled, an unparalleled variety of colors, effects, and sensations that are unique in the market to suit your style, your skin tone, skin type, and specific tastes at every phase of your life. Kiko's identity is rooted in the made in Italy phrase, values as the world capital for fashion, um, art, and design. As craftsmen of the original texture of color and evolution of beauty, we offer quality formulas with guaranteed performance for a perfect fusion of quality and creativity. Accessible and irresistible from Italy with love. It seems here they, they talk a lot about whatever your style is, whatever your creativity, your age range. I mean, I even kind of think whatever your makeup skill level is, I guess. There should be products within Kiko that should work for everybody is kind of what I'm getting at with this. So super duper excited about that. So I'm gonna just take a quick second here to get this broken down and then we will get jumping into playing with the makeup. I've got it all taken out of its containers, laid out here in front of me. The packaging on this stuff is really, really nice. So excited about that. So we've got a full face here. Um, we don't have a full like 15-ish products like I usually try to go for for these brand new face videos. We've got 13 products in front of me. So the things I was not able to get or that they did not have was a brow gel, but we do have a brow pencil. It might be even like a two-in-one. I'll have to take a look here. Um, and then the other product is a setting spray. So we do not have a setting spray as well to finish everything off, but that is okay. We can still create a full face with everything that's in front of us here. So let's go ahead then and get started on the eyes like we usually do. And we are going to prep these with the concealer. And they've got a couple of options on their website for concealer, but I decided to go with their universal stick concealer. Here is what it looks like. And I picked up their shade, it looks like 01 Ivory. And so when you open this up here, 
Um, it's like a crayon, so it's a thicker consistency of concealer. So instead of using a doe foot, we're gonna draw this on and blend it out that way. I don't use a lot of these, but they definitely can be fun to use at times. And I did not dampen the blender here yet. Ooh, that is very creamy. So yep, just gonna start blending it here in the eye. I, I did not dampen, damp, burp, 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 burp. I did not remember to dampen a blender here yet. I am just gonna quickly blend this out with a dry beauty blender and then I'll go and dampen this here in a little bit to have it ready to go for the face. Okay, so I think the shade is working out really well here. I do see a little bit of coverage coming from it. It's very interesting where like, I expected it to feel thicker, but it feels like it dries down pretty quick. Like there's not like a like a grippy feeling to it or anything. It kind of feels almost powdery. And just for fun, I'm gonna try to cover this guy up here right away and see if that helps out any bit. Oh, wow. Um, That might actually be really nice. Wow, okay. So far, so good with the first product here. I am surprised on how much I actually like this. It doesn't feel heavy on the eyes. I feel like it's prepped them really, really nicely. As I was kind of saying, it feels like it kind of dries down to be almost powdery. So kind of like a matte finish, I'd say. This shade is working really, really well here for me. It's not like full coverage. I can still see some veining coming through, but I might be able to build that up a little bit. I'm not gonna worry too much about trying that today because I don't want it to crease up or anything on the eyes. Not at all what I expected and in a really good way. And I'm surprised as well on how it covered that up and how undetectable that looks now. That is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go dampen this so it can be ready for our face products. Blender is dampened. Let's keep going with the makeup here now and move on to the eyeshadows. Similar to concealers, they also have a lot of options for eyeshadows as well. Um, but I decided to pick up one of their Bright Quartet. I think that's what they mean by that. Bright Quartet eyeshadow palette. So here's what it looks like, this very sleek black packaging. I like the like how the sides here look. I think that's really, really cool. Now it does look different on their website versus what it looks like here when I open it. On the website, the pans look to be very flat, but mine are like bubbled. They're like, I think it would be like that baked formula or whatever, where like it's not packed flat, but it's yeah, bubbling out. So that was kind of interesting to me. I wonder if they've made changes. I hope this is the most, like the more newer of it, or I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, just that minor little difference. It's got a nice looking mirror there on the inside. And so this is what we're gonna use on our eyes today. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this lightest shade here. They don't have names for them. I think this is just a one and dip into that. Now this does look to have a little bit of shimmer in it. I'm gonna put this in as our transition. I don't usually like shimmer in the transition, but we'll give it a go. Definitely a little more highlighty. And the brush that I'm using today is a uh, Mateo Beauty brush. Small little brand that I wanted to support and I really like the brushes. Okay, not sure how well that shade will pick up on camera here. It is just very shimmery, not my preference for a uh, transition. So I am gonna go over that now with what looks to be probably the only matte shade in the palette and kind of just go over that and try to get our shape and base from this. Now it was hard to tell if it was because I was going over that shimmery shade this was actually matte, or if it did have any sheen to it. And I just put a little bit on my hand here. It doesn't pick up very, very well, but it does actually look to have a bit of reflectiveness in there and the smallest little amount of glitter pigments. So this is not a full matte shade either. So it is still giving us a little bit of a sheen and glitter in the eyes there. I'm not even sure if you can see much of this here yet. I've gone over it a couple of times. I can see it here in person slightly. It's just like a wash of color. I don't know that that's even showing up on camera for you guys here. So we're gonna try to deepen things up a little bit more. I'm gonna stick to the brush here just for a little bit longer going into this deepest shade here on the bottom now. There doesn't seem to be much of any kickback, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna switch to my finger here now, trying to go into that deepest shade again here. 
see if I can try and pack it on a little bit more that way on the outer edge. I am really enjoying the mirror on here, so that's nice. <laughs> and then continuing with my finger, I'm gonna take this last second from Darkest Shade and apply that on the more inner part of the eyelid. Okay, um, there's the eyeshadows. I can barely see this on camera. I can, it's like a wash of color in person. Mostly you can just see the shimmers. Every single eyeshadow in here has a little bit of shimmer to it. I went ahead and swatched them on the back of my hand here too. And I don't know, if you can't tell, I am not too impressed by this right now. So that's where we're gonna leave the eyes. That is the eyeshadow here so far. So the next product I believe will be eyeliner. So this guy right here, they also, they have a lot of options on their site here. So eyeliner that we got, this is their definition waterproof eyeliner. Now I don't usually get these types of eyeliners just cause I prefer the pen, but this is one of them where you do have to dip back in to the product and stuff and it's got a brush tip applicator. <laughs> I can sometimes struggle with these types of applicators but um, I thought I would kind of mix it up, get a different type. So this is the eyeliner we're going to be using today so let's uh, give this a go. All right, there is that eyeliner applied. I kept it pretty simple being that I struggle with those types of applicators and just created a a uh, pretty tiny wing with it. Honestly, for a small wing like that, it worked out really well. Um, this only took one dip in and I was able to get a pretty precise line. This side needed very minimal cleanup and stuff. Glides on really, really well. It wasn't honestly too, too messy. It's hard to tell the finish of it. I think it's a matte finish, uh, maybe leaning slightly satin. Yeah, dries down really, really nice. The one thing about it, and it's it's probably more me, but I find that with these types of applicators and the product being so liquidy, I get it all over my lashes <laughs> and I get distracted by that. We'll be putting mascara on the lashes here anyways. Don't know if it's gonna affect that at all. It's something, it's a different, you need to work around it a little bit differently with these types of applicators. But honestly, for this little, little wing, I think that that worked out pretty well. So that is the eyeliner. Let's jump into the mascara. As I've already said with all of these products, they have so many options on their website, like so many things to choose from, it's crazy. Um, the one that I decided to go with, I believe is a newer one for them. It is the 30 Day Extensions Daily Treatment Mascara. So I'm like, intrigued as to what it means by treatment. It says on here, it is ideal for adding intensity and definition to your eyes with the benefits of a lengthening and volume volumizing cosmetic treatment. Its innovative formula combines immediate aesthetic performance with the effectiveness of volumizing and lengthening cosmetic treatment. They say that again, uh, giving you panoramic lashes for a dramatic eye opening effect. The extreme flexible Elastomer brush evenly coats the lashes with a clump free intense black. They don't really in there go into the lengthening cosmetic treatment. Treatment. I kind of read that as it just has ingredients in it or whatever that are good for uh, conditioning and helping your lashes over time grow. Um, but I, I didn't really see that there, but supposed to be intense black, uh, lengthening, volumizing, definition, and stuff like that. So here is what the packaging looks like on this guy. And they talk about the, the flexible elastomer brush. I can't pronounce that. Maybe that's what these more rubber silicone brushes are. I will have to look into that. But here is what the applicator looks like. Yep, kind of just like narrows down into like smaller bristles at the tip here, a little bit bigger um, near the opposite end of the brush here. Cool, all right, let's uh, apply this onto our eyes. I did go ahead and already curl my lashes. Okay, wow. Um, there is one coat on these lashes here so far. That was really, really nice and easy. It feels really, really lightweight, like it's barely even there. Not a whole lot of product like glops onto the applicator, which I think is really, really nice. So it feels super duper lightweight, yet I am seeing some of that length. 
I feel like I can maybe build up another layer here and get more length, maybe a little bit more drama and volume from it. But I mean, that first layer, yeah, that first layer there is pretty darn nice. So I'm gonna do the other eye and put on our second layer here as well. Okay, there is the mascara on. Hopefully you guys can see my teeny tiny baby lashes. Um, that is two layers and I am very surprised by it. I do wish that they stayed maybe just a little bit more lifted. I do think that it is providing a little bit of length. I, I mostly just really like how lightweight it feels, but you can still see it. It's not like a too natural of looking mascara or anything. It definitely still has some of that length and drama and volume to it, but does not feel heavy at all. So. Honestly, that is really, really nice. And if it is like a treatment mascara, hopefully over time, it'll be good on the eyes and help my lashes grow. <laughs> so that's where we're gonna leave the eyes here for now. We are going to now jump into the face products and do the primer. And for primers, they also have so many options, not as many as the other products, but just a variety of options available on the site, which is really, really nice. The one that we picked up today is the Matte Face Base. And so here's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and apply this all over. Ooh, ooh it is a clear. Ooh, I wonder if it's silicone product, if it's gonna have like a slip to it. Silica, I really don't know. Probably just the room here in my hands. It's very cold on my face. <laughs> That is applied all over. It starts out feeling kind of tacky. It does not have that weird slip, which I'm really, really happy about. I was worried about that. Yeah, it, it starts out feeling a little bit tacky, but it is starting to dry down, but maybe still just like a slight grip feel to it. Not necessarily seeing anything pore filling, but I didn't see that it really claimed any of that anyways. It's just very simple, a very matte primer, um, which is definitely hard to tell on the skin here right now, but it's supposed to kind of help, it says, but like oil control. So far, so good. Not too sure what to think about it here quite yet. We'll see how the products lay over top. Now, usually I would go into foundation next, but because the concealer is a like stick concealer, I do want to do that first and then kind of re-go over some of the blemishes here on the face and then put the foundation over top of that, I think. Start off with something like that. That concealer is applied. Again, it helped a lot with like some of these blemishes and stuff here on my face. I do think it did help with that a lot, but also I don't think it's a very full coverage concealer where I do feel that my eyes don't look to be necessarily brightened or concealed. They definitely still look tired and puffy or whatever. Um, I'm actually really, really happy with how it performed on other spots of the face here and covering up any of those spots. And it does not, like it just, it doesn't feel heavy at all. So I do like that as well. Maybe we'll try to layer a little bit more on top of the foundation, we'll see. But now let's go into the foundation. So for foundation, we picked up their full coverage two-in-one foundation and concealer. This guy right here, hopefully I picked up a decent shade online. This is their N25 shade. I think that's the one I got, just neutral 25. It's one of their newer shades, I guess they expanded. That's really cool. So yeah, hopefully this is a decent shade range or shade match. Let's see what the finisher of this intends to do. Superior coverage with a matte satin finish. Ideal for all skin types. Okay, so matte, you know, maybe a semi kind of satin finish to it. Um, so this comes in a glass package, very, very nice. And when you open it, it actually has a doe foot applicator, which I think is really, really cool. So we will go ahead, I'm just gonna start on one side of the face here, dot this all over, and then we'll blend it in with our blender. Ooh, that's a little dark. Ah! Okay, so I've gone ahead and blended it out on one side of the face here so far. This shade is definitely too dark for me, but I think we can make it work. Mostly just because like even blending towards the center of my face here, you can't see like a significant like shade jump. What I'm getting at with that is that like, you could probably go pretty sheer with this. It has some decent coverage. I, I still wouldn't say full coverage, possibly buildable. I do see the matte and matte. 
the matte finish to it. It dries down really nicely though too. Wow. Barely tacky. Everything has like this almost powdery finish to it, which is really, really nice, I think. A little bit dark, but I'm not like super shocked by it because the way it blends into the skin is still very smooth and very seamless in a way that like it's not startling with how off that is. Like it's definitely too orangey for me. Not a shade I would like ever wear. It's workable, I guess, is a good way to say it, where you can get it to blend in with the skin pretty nicely. I feel like the last time I wore this shirt in a video it was a very, very early video, but I also had too dark of a foundation shade. It must just be the shirt. Okay, we've got that blended in. Aside from it being too dark, I think that I really, really like this. It feels so light on the face. It does not necessarily, like, like, I could probably get away with not even setting this. It is matte, but not drying. It is laying over top of the primer really, really well. It is, I would say, a medium buildable coverage, but again, not heavy like this. It still feels very skin-like and looks very skin-like. Hardly looks and feels like I'm wearing any foundation at all on the skin here. So I'm very shocked by this. I like the glass packaging. I don't mind the doe foot applicator at all with the foundation. I know some people don't like that. I don't mind it. I will say I wish they had more shade ranges. They have 20 shades currently. They don't go super dark. And I do think that this N25 is kind of one of more, their more lighter shades. I will definitely need to be trying to pick up a lighter shade than this one because it is a little dark. I actually am really enjoying how the foundation looks and feels on the face here. Very natural, but great coverage. Not clinging on anything necessarily. My skin has been very dry. It's kind of all over the place with it being really cold. Very shocked by this. So that's super exciting. Um, had to blend it down the neck here a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to fix that a little bit later here down the road. But because it's a little bit dark, I'm gonna go back in with our concealer stick here and see if we can provide a little bit of brightness in the center of the face here again. Okay, I think that's helping slightly. I'm very shocked with how easy this cream stick blends in. A lot of times when I've used creamy concealers like this, they tend to just stay in that one spot and not blend out. And this one does a pretty good job. Yeah, I think that helped a tiny, tiny bit. Not as brightening as I'd like, but I think still better. Can work with this. So for setting powder, I decided to pick up their Invisible Touch Face Fixing Primer. It says best in Europe, which is very cool. Hopefully it's good here too. Um, but here is what the packaging looks like. This is such a cool and interesting package for a setting powder. Very excited about this. Let's see what this intends. Setting and mattifying face powder banishes any shiny areas from the skin. I don't think we've got much shine going on. We have a matte primer, matte foundation, concealer dries down kind of powdery matte as well. So I mean, not much shine to take away here at all. Sheer veil adheres perfectly to the skin. Lightweight, just like a lot of the other stuff here that we've been using. Soft and velvety to the touch. Okay, so. Interesting. So opening it up here, the puff is attached to the lid here. It looks, is this the powder? Oh no, 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 that's just a seal. <laughs> Take that out. After you take the little protector off, I'll try to angle this. Oop, oh, no, making a mess. Maybe you can see there, it's got like a, a little opening, a little spiral opening. Ah, it is mega lightweight, holy bananas. So I'll try to use this little puffer on the top here. We'll see. Don't know the best way to get it onto the puff. Okay, interesting. We'll just start puffing this all over the face. Okay, we've got that powder applied. I went ahead and used the little puff thing in here to apply most of the powder. It is a very dense puff, and I'm not sure the best way to get the powder to the puff. Like, I'm not sure if shaking it upside down is what you want to do. I don't know. It doesn't put a lot of powder on how, the way I did it, doing it that way, but also I didn't feel that I needed a lot. So I did that for the majority of the face, and then I just used a little velour puff here to get under the eyes and push it in there. I will say this is the most dry my face has felt now. All the other matte products didn't feel like that. 
um, but now with this powder, I definitely do feel quite dry. So it would be nice to have some sort of like setting spray or something like that to bring a little bit of hydration back. Um, but we are looking very matte now. We're feeling set for sure. And I didn't even have to use a lot of that product. So there's that. I'm not too sure what to think of it here yet, but I don't see, aside from it being matte, I don't see it really altering anything at all, which is really, really nice. It did make quite the mess. I have powder everywhere. But let's go into the brows here now. So for the brows, we've got the Eyebrow Multitasker 3-in-1 product. And I've got their lightest shade, I think, here, 01 Light Blonde. Here is what this looks like. So it says it's a 3-in-1. So it's got, let's see, on one end here, it's got a spoolie. Love it. We love a spoolie. So that must be one step. I don't know. Then we've got a brow pencil on the other end. And then if we twist in the middle here, we've got a brow powder. This looks very dark for a light blonde. Well, maybe a three in one. That, I mean, unless they're counting the spoolie as a one step. Three in one eyebrow perfecter. Brush to groom and neaten your eyebrows. Pencil define powder to fill and blend. All right, T. So I'll try to follow that. Brush, fill, then powder. So we'll use the spoolie on the one end here. Comb our brows in place and then go in with the pencil here. It is a wider like a diamond shaped pencil so we'll see how quick this fills in. And now let's try out the powder. I don't do a lot of powder brow. Okay well there's one brow done. Let's go ahead and do the other one now. I think that's as good as the brows are going to get. Here they are completed. I will say I like the brow pencil on it. The brow powder, I'm just not familiar enough on. And I just, I don't know how well using a little like a sponge applicator like this is for getting a precise brow. So I didn't necessarily enjoy that part of it, but I do like the pencil. I do like the color of it. Just like everything else feels very powdery. A very matte kind of finish to it, which I do enjoy. It's not waxy or anything like that. So I think the brows are looking good here so far. Um, we do not have a gel to like set them in place or anything like that, but that is okay. Let's go ahead and quickly finish up under the eyes here now. There are the eyes complete. Kept it pretty simple with the eyeshadows being that they're not the most pigmented. I do really like though that lightest shade and how it is looking in the inner corner. I do think that's really, really pretty. And then the mascara on the lower lash lines is feeling really nice. I think that could be a really nice lower lash line mascara. So there are the eyes. Let's keep going on the face here now. The next couple of products that we have are cream products, which I did not think about when it came to setting the face here, but that's okay. Hopefully they'll still work just fine over top. So for contour, we are going to be using the Sculpting Touch Creamy Stick Contour. Now this isn't on their website anymore. I had to go to Ulta to find it. It's an online only for Ulta, so hopefully it's nothing nothing that's being discontinued or anything like that. Um, if it is, I'm sorry. They do have so many bronzers and so many contours and stuff on their website. They're just not cream their powders and stuff. So as we've kind of noticed with this brand, they've got a lot of variety, but this is what we're going to be using today to contour the face. So opening it up, here's what it looks like. And I got their shade 200, which I think is hazelnut. It does not say. On Ulta, they only have two shades currently. They've got hazelnut and chocolate. This looks to be the lighter one, which I imagine is hazelnut. I usually like to kind of draw this stuff on the face right away. You know, some people like to do it differently. That's what it looks like on the back of the hand. Honestly, it has a bit of warmth to it. So it might be kind of a good in-between contour bronzer. It feels very creamy. So hopefully it'll blend out nicely on the face here. So let's go ahead and apply this. And I'll just do it one little bit at a time. I'm going to use a Larisse or LR375. It's plus. It is a flat powder brush, but I do like using this for cream contours. 
Okay, here's one side done so far. I think that that is blending out really, really nicely. I do think the fact that it's going over powder has a couple of little spots where it's clinging barely, so it maybe would have blended on just a little bit better if we went directly over the foundation. Um, but even still, it's blending out fine when drawing it on. I'm doing a little bit of like putting the brush in there and packing it on in some places. Compared to the opposite side here, I think that looks really, really nice. Let's go ahead and keep going. Okay, the bronzer is applied. Contour bronzer applied, fully blended in. I love that shade. It contours really, really nice, but it still has a bit of warmth to it where I do like the bronze that it provides to the face. Um, this is what's been sitting on my hand here when we were swatching it. So I mean, like even after letting it sit, I feel that it like blends through so, so nicely. I am loving that a lot. I'm really liking that shade. Um, similar to everything that we've been using here so far, creamy, but when it starts to dry down, it feels powdery. It feels matte. Really, really liking it. Um, laid over the powder really, really nicely. I don't see it breaking up any of the foundation at all. Everything still feels very light on the face here. So that is awesome. Let's go into highlighter here next, um, cause that's also going to be a cream product. Let's see if this one's on their site. This one is also online only at Ulta. So similar to the bronzer, hopefully it's not something that's being discontinued. They do still also have a lot, bunch of highlighters on their site as well, but this is their Radiant Touch Creamy Stick Highlighter. And I got the shade 001. And they don't break that down very well as to how many shades they have on Ulta. But here is what it looks like. Similar packaging to the bronzer. Very, okay. Yeah. Very pearly, minimal looking like shimmer flex to it. Just seems to be a very pearly product. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna use my hand here, get it on my finger and blend it in that way first. Very natural, subtle, I would say is a good way to describe it as, I mean, at least when applying it this way, I'm gonna try and apply a little bit more directly to the face this way and then blend it out. Mm, not really, but you can kind of see it. It provides just a kind of natural little sheen to the face here. Doesn't overdo it. It does not, it dries down not feeling creamy at all. I mean, yeah, you, it kind of has, you can still see a little bit of the Illuminati bits on the back of my hand there. Very natural, but not heavy feeling at all for a highlighter. Let's move on to blush now. Now this one is on their site. Okay. This is their Velvet Touch Creamy Stick Blush similar package to the bronzer and highlighter as well. On their site, they currently have this in three shades. I've got their O2 Golden Peach shade. Here's what that looks like. Ooh, does not appear the same way it does in person here. It's a very bright, vibrant, has some bits of sheen to it. Yeah, it might be a better true color, very bright bright pink. Feels very similar to the highlighter and bronzer here. So let's try blending it onto a brush here first. And then I'm going to go over that um part that I like blended on the back of my hand here to try to distribute throughout the brush here and then pack it on that way first. Not sure how much of the color will show up here. It's very pretty. I almost think it's a little bit more luminate than the highlighter. So I think I'm seeing more glow from this than I am from the highlighter. In person, I can see it a little bit more. It's a very cute baby girl, pinky color. Does not appear that intense on camera for sure. It's cute. It's not a color I wear very often, so um, I'd have to get used to it here. This one actually feels a little bit more creamy than the highlighter and the bronzer. This one doesn't feel to um, dry down to that like matte kind of finish as quick as the other ones did, but still not heavy or anything like that. So there is that. Yeah, I think the loom is coming more from this than it is from the highlighter. I do still really, really like that. Next, we are going to go into lips and these will be the last products. So on their website, they do have lip liners. I decided to pick up their Smart Fusion Creamy Lip Cran. 
and try to kind of use this as a liner. We do also have a lipstick as well. This currently is in 10 shades. They even have a white one. Yeah, they have a white one on there, which is very, very interesting. But the one that I picked up is their O. A radish mob. So here is what this guy looks like. So it's a thick pencil that you'd have to sharpen, wooden pencil, very creamy on the back of the hand here. Yes, okay, very mob. I do see that. So let's apply this on the lips. Okay, there is that liner crayon on the lips here. That is a really fun color. Radish mob. I like the vibrant pinkiness to it. Um, very, very pretty. It feels fairly comfortable on the lips here. I do find that the tip on it, it's very pigmented, applies very easily, very quick. The tip on it does kind of round down pretty quick. So um, for me, that makes me struggle with getting decent lines. So there's the crayon liner. Let's go ahead and do the lipstick here now. And which one did I get here? Again, so many options, which is very, very amazing. I went with their Jelly Stylo. This comes in 12 shades and I got their 509 Rosetto shade. So here is the packaging. I think this packaging is super duper cute. And then we open it up here. Here's what this one looks like. And let's give it a good swatch. Okay, so this is the lip product. So yeah, it's jelly. So it is actually more of a sheer formula. It looks like it just kind of provides a juicy top, I guess, to everything. So let's put that on. Very juicy. I know the lip lines are not pretty with this. It's a little messy on the edges here, but over top of that uh, lip crayon, it's really, really pretty. I'm curious to see what this would look like on its own. I kind of want to wipe this off and try it out that way and see what I think. Lips are cleaned up. Let's go in with this first and then maybe we'll just kind of line around it. I mean, it still has a bit of pigment. It looks pretty similar, but just a little bit more sheer. I'm going to try to line around the edges with the crayon now. Probably not a very good job, but that's okay. Um, those, I mean, the shades on both of those are very, very similar. So definitely a little bit more sheer when it is just the lip product. And I think it is very cute. It looks really, really nice. Um, I like the feel of it. Um, nice and juicy, nice and glossy, something like that. <laughs> Probably not the best looking lips, but that's okay. I like how it feels. I like how both of those products are working. And overall, I like how the face is looking. So that is actually all of the products. This is the full face. Let me take my clips out here real quick. Clips are out. Here is what the full face is looking like. I really like how the makeup look turned out here. And I just, it does not look or feel heavy or anything like that. Um, so we're gonna get into talking about the full cost of this and the products individually and what we think about them. Um, so let me know what you think of this and we will start discussing the products individually here. So looking at the full face cost for this look, we had 13 products, everything that we used here on our face, the full cost is $201.37. Now that is a little pricier. And for some of these products, I don't think that that's too bad. They definitely have quality to them. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing is just how light the face feels. It does not feel like I'm wearing a lot of makeup on the face here. And everything does look just, everything blends with each other really, really nicely. Definitely a higher cost. It's always fun to see a lower cost when it comes to creating these brand new faces, but high quality products were used um, or high quality ingredients were used, I guess. And, um, I did still enjoy the experience of putting this face together. So I don't think that's too bad for some of the products here. Let's just go ahead and talk about it individually here now. So the first thing that we dove into was the concealer and we used this concealer stick. I am gonna say yes to this. Now, I don't know how often I will use it as an eye base or to use to correct underneath the eyes but I was really thrilled with how it worked with underneath blemishes and spot correcting on the face. 
I do think it could be a really, really good product for that. And the way that it blended out, uh, compared to other cream concealers that I've used in this kind of like crayon form, the best that I've probably used. So this is definitely a yes. Then we went into the eyeshadow and we used this guy here. Now the eyes are looking cute, they're looking pretty, but I think I'm gonna have to say no to this. I just, I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this and when applying it onto the eyes, I just wasn't very impressed with the sheer pigment that this particular palette provided. So even though the eyes look really, really nice, it's just not a eyeshadow palette for me. So this is going to be a no. Then we went into the eyeliner, this guy right here. Now, even though this is not an eyeliner type that I typically use, I'm actually very, very happy with how the wings and the eyeliner look. Um, it was very easy application, one dip in to get this type of wing and this type of application. Nothing seems to be smudging or budging around. Everything is staying in place really, really nicely. So this is gonna be a yes for now. I do wanna try it out a couple more times and try to get more familiar with this type of application um, because it does look really, really pretty. So this is a yes. And then next we did the mascara. This is also a yes. Um, similar to what I'm gonna probably say about a lot of these products is how undetectable everything kind of feels. So I feel that I'm getting some length from this mascara. I definitely see some of the drama and how black the mascara is but it does not feel heavy. It hardly feels like there's any mascara on the eyes, but it is definitely there. So loving that. I do think that this is gonna be a really great lower lash mascara. So this guy is a yes. Then we hopped into the face and we did the primer. This guy right here. I'm gonna say yes for now to this guy. Aside from it being mattifying, um, I guess it wasn't very silicone which was really, really nice. I just don't know what to think about it here yet. I don't think it is disrupting anything underneath at all. Everything is staying on the face really, really nicely. Um, so I just need to play with this one a little bit more to actually see where it sits and how I feel and how often I will end up using it because I didn't have much of a thought on it here, I guess, the first time using it. So yes, for now to this guy. Um, we'll definitely have to try it out a couple more times to see how I actually feel about it. And then the foundation, aside from the shade, which I think it's kind of working, it's a little bit darker in person than how it appears on camera. If I tanned in the summer, maybe I could get away with this one. But the formula of this, yes, I love how this feels on the face. I'm shocked by how much I like how it feels on the face. It is matte but it's not drying at all. Thin, but medium to buildable coverage. I don't mind the doe foot applicator. I love the glass packaging. I love the sleek packaging. I think I am not a makeup artist. It'd be cool to be a makeup artist. And that's a thought that I think of a lot, but um, something about this sleek, slim packaging, I think traveling makeup artist and I, it might be good for that. I don't know, but that's where my mind goes to with this one. I think this could be a very nice, light, thin feeling, lightweight, matte foundation that a traveling makeup artist might enjoy, possibly. So I'm gonna say yes to this guy and I'm definitely gonna look into getting a lighter shade. So for the brows, we use this three-in-one multitasker product. And I will say yes to it. I don't think I'm going to use the powder ever really on it, but the color of the light blonde and the powdery feel of it, I definitely enjoy. It applied very nice and easy and quickly. Um, I enjoy that it has the spoolie on the opposite end here. So this guy is a yes. Oh, I skipped over the powder, sorry. Invisible Touch Face Powder. I'm gonna say yes for now. When using it today, I felt that with all the other matte products underneath, it did start to feel very drying. And the fact that we didn't have a setting spray to kind of bring some hydration back, and also that I don't think that that foundation necessarily needed to be set, maybe, I don't know. I didn't like how it initially felt then, 
So I'm gonna say yes for now. I wanna use it with other products. I wanna use it when also setting down with a setting spray to see how that works, how those products work together. But it was very drying just on initial application. I'm not sure about the whole puff situation here on how well that'll be. I might end up just using a brush or a blender or even a separate velour puff or something like that to be a little bit more precise because the applicator in here is very dense and big and not so easy to get into little nooks and crannies on the face. So yes, for now, very curious about it. Um, but for today's application, I wasn't too sure about it. Then we went into our cream products and we started off with our sculpting cream contour. I definitely hope this is still gonna be available because I liked it. I liked this a lot. It still blended over the powders really, really nicely. The color of this one specifically, the 200 shade worked really, really well for me. I think there's only two shades right now. Sculpt really well, but still was a little bit of a warm enough product that I think it provided some nice warmth to the skin. So this guy's a yes. The highlighter, for the highlighter, the Radiant Touch Creamy Stick Highlighter, I think I'm gonna say no to this one. It was cute, it was very, very natural. I just don't find myself reaching for high highlighters quite like this. And I know that I have other highlighters that come to mind more that I would want to use that show up just a little bit more than this one did. So I think for this guy, I'm gonna say no. And then for the blush, I'm gonna say yes for now to the blush. It's not very noticeable here on camera, but in person I can see that bright, vibrant pink, which is very, very cute. The thing that I'm hesitant about it is that I'm just not one for very sh uh, shimmery or illuminating blushes. I do like a matte blush, I do prefer that, but it is still really pretty on the face here. So I wanna give it a couple more goes, see where it sits in the collection, see how often I pick it up. So it is gonna be a yes for now. Then we went into the lip products and the first product was the um, Smart Fusion Lip Crayon. I think I'm gonna say no to the crayon. Um, the color is really, really pretty, but being that it's a larger crayon, I had a harder time when it came to lines and things like that. Um, so I just don't think that I would pick this up very often. And I do have other colors in my collection that are close to it that I do think I enjoy just a little bit more. So this uh, crayon is gonna be a no for me, but the Jelly Lip product is a yes. I was actually very surprised with the pigment that it still provided without the crayon underneath. And I do like the juicy finish that it has and it's not uncomfortable or anything like that. So this guy is definitely a yes. And that is all of the products. We're only getting rid of three of them so far. Out of everything that I'm holding onto, the things that I'm the most wowed by are probably, I think the foundation is the one I'm the most impressed by. Other than that, it would be the sculpting bronzer contour stick and the 30 days extensions mascara. Just these three products especially, I was very impressed by their performance, but the biggest thing is just how lightweight everything feels on the skin. And so these ones for sure are favorites just off the bat, but I'm really happy with how the face here turned out, how everything is looking, how everything is feeling. I would love to hear what you guys think of the look in the comments down below, or if you guys have any Kiko Milano products that you guys enjoy, because they have so much on their site. They mentioned in their About Us having a variety or something along the lines of having just a variety for any type of skin, age, um, preference to your style of makeup. And I think that's true because they have a lot of options to pick from. So even though some of the products I may have said no to, I bet I'd be able to find something on the site that does work for me. So I love, love that. And yeah, let me know down below if you have any favorite Kiko products and if you guys have any other brand recommendations, I would love for you guys to leave those in the comments down below as well so we can add them to the list of so many brands. 
And that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. And if you want to be notified of the next time that I post, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you could be notified. And that's it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.